everyone, welcome to the Oak Lords YouTube channel. My name is Jessica. Today, we're working on the Swoon Heidi Bag. You know it, you love it, you've probably heard of it. If you haven't, welcome. This is a great bag for the beginner-ish. And I'll get to that in just a minute. Before I start, I have to give a quick disclaimer. I am in no way affiliated with or sponsored by Swoon. All purchases were made by me at full price. All opinions expressed are my own. I am sharing this tutorial purely because I love this pattern. So the bag we're making today is the Heidi bag. The Heidi bag is actually a free pattern on the Swoon website, and it's great if you have a bit of bag making experience. For example, maybe you made a boxy bag, or maybe you made one of the snack pouches from another one of my tutorials, and you have become comfortable with using a zipper. This is going to be the next step up. This is a great pattern because it's going to still be a beginner level pattern, but it's also going to invite you to try some new techniques that you might not have done before. So before we get started, let me just remind you to subscribe down below so that you can keep up to date with all the new tutorials we're coming out with. Like this video if at any point, you know, you like the video. And let's get started. So this is the swoon bag, right? <laughs> this is a freaking cute bag. This is a small size and it has a wristlet with it. As you can see, it has a magnetic clasp and you open it up like this and it's got a zipper on the top. Bam, look at that, right? Super cute. It also has a very convenient zipper on the back. I am honestly kind of shocked this is a free pattern considering how like sleek of a bag this is and how many different additions there are to it. So. I mean, download it, it's free guys, it's free. And free patterns are a great way for you to find out if you like the pattern writer or not. There's a lot of beautiful patterns out there and there's a lot of beautiful bags, but if you don't click well with the pattern writer, purchasing one of those patterns is gonna do you no good. It's just gonna be a waste of money. Always try designers free patterns first so you can kind of get a feel for how they explain the steps. And then if you like it, go ahead and buy them. Swoon is great. She provides tons of examples and tons of pictures. So this is the small size, and then this is the large size. I love the large size. This is actually like my sewing bag. I keep all kinds of stuff in here. But you see, it also has the big back. And then it has the top, just like the small. This is just clutch size. You can add some D-rings on the side and a strap and make it, you know, Super cute little bag. I mean, this is this would be a great crossbody bag. So as usual, I will have the timestamps for every single step of the pattern in the first comment down below. So if you just need to kind of skip to, maybe you're on step four and you're like, I don't really, I can't see it. Click right there, it's gonna take you to step four. So let's get started guys. Let's go over what we need. First thing you're gonna need is the pattern. I like to print off the patterns and store them in these large manila envelopes. And that way I can also keep all of my little pattern pieces in there and all the instructions and I can easily find what I'm looking for. So today we're actually making the large clutch size, which is this one. The large clutch size does not have a wristlet. If you're making the smaller one and you wanna add a wristlet, I have a tutorial on how to do that and I will link that down below. Next thing you're going to need is half a yard of the exterior fabric. Today we're gonna make a fun little Toy Story bag because why not? Toy Story's fun, right? This fabric is from Backstitch Fabrics. If you have looked into Backstitch Fabrics, you know that their fabrics can be pretty difficult to get a hold of, but I will put links down below to help you find this if you're interested. You'll also need half of a yard of lining fabric. This is my lining fabric. You're gonna need some vinyl for that accent on the front of the bag. The vinyl I'll be using today is this sparkly pink vinyl. I got this from So Sweetness. I'll have a link for it down below. I like to pick a vinyl that's kind of shown in one of my prints, unless you're doing a very basics bag, maybe like a beige bag with like a black vinyl or you know a dark brown vinyl, something very simple. But for me, I'm, you know, I'm colorful, so it's a colorful bag. Next thing you're gonna need is a 30 yard of fusible fleece. This is obviously quite a bit more than a third of a yard, but this stuff is thick. This is gonna make the bag look like you bought it instead of like you made it. So you're gonna need is two yards of a fusible wo woven. She suggests SF101, which is this by Pellon. It's the pink label, SF101 Shape Flex. Um, I have a lot of this and it's fine. I actually prefer to use Woven Fuse. It's by Barb's Bags and I'll have a link for it below. This is actually a lot wider. It's actually 44 inches wide instead of this, which is 
not. <laughs> it's just a lot easier to manage. It, it, it seems to adhere very quickly and it stays really well. So I prefer Woven Fuse. Like I said, I'll have a link for all of this down below. You're also gonna need two 11 inch all purpose zippers. I'm actually using 12 inch zippers. It's gonna be fine. I'm just using them because I don't have 11 inch zippers. All right, and then she suggests fabric glue. I use Elmer's glue or my sew line glue. For attaching the zippers, I actually like to use this quarter inch double sided sticky tape. And then if you're gonna use this with your sewing machine, I suggest you also get alcohol prep pads to wipe the glue off of your needle once you're done sewing with this because this is very sticky and after you go through it a couple times, your needle gets a little bit gunked up, which can make the stitches come out when you're sewing. So I like to just wipe it down with an alcohol wipe just to get the stickiness off and then my needle's fine. You also need one 18 millimeter snap. These are pretty standard size. You can buy a whole set of these if you look on Amazon or Etsy, there's tons and tons of these. Pretty much you just need the male end, the female end, and then some protectors that go on the outside. So I will show you how to install these. And then coordinating thread. I prefer to use 40 weight thread, and I'm just gonna be using a light pink thread, which is fine. But 50 weight thread also works. 40 weight thread is just a little bit thicker, which I like to use with my bags or with quilting. If you're planning on making a few of these bags and you wanna make your own plastic templates. I'll show you mine. These are my plastic templates. To make these, you're going to need to get some clear cutting mats. I got these from Dollar General. You can also find these on Amazon. You just want them to be clear. And what you'll do is you'll take the pattern piece that's printed off in the pattern and you'll lay this over it using a regular Sharpie, not you know a calligraphy or fancy Sharpie, it has to be a regular Sharpie trace over the pattern pieces. Now I like to trace with shiny side up. Well, you'll see with this cutting mat, there's a shiny side and there's a rougher side. I like the rougher side on the bottom because it sticks to the fabric a bit more and the shiny side up top because it's also easier to write on. All you do is you lay your cutting mat over the pattern piece and then trace along the pattern. And I like to write whatever goes with it too. I like to write down how many of the exterior I need to cut with it, how many of the woven I have to cut with it till I have it all on my pattern piece so I don't have to go looking at my pattern for every step. And then last but not least, I like to have a little bit of washi tape or masking tape. I like to use this to mark my fabric pieces after I've cut them. As you can see, there's exterior piece A, exterior piece B. It can get a little confusing when you're going through the pattern, so I like to just mark them with some tape in my Sharpie and then I'll remove them after I'm done sewing it together. Let's start prepping all of our fabric. So step one is the prep step. This is all about just getting your fabric cut and interfaced. You're gonna wanna cut your two pocket panels. These do not need to be interfaced. And you're gonna cut your two lining panels. These are interfaced with the woven fuse or SF-101. You're gonna have an exterior piece, and then you're gonna have pattern pieces A and B. Now, when I cut these, you can see on pattern piece B, one edge is perfectly straight and one is just slightly rounded. This can get a little confusing. So when you make your template, so here's the fold, make sure you write an arrow so you know which side is up. If you have a pattern that you want it to be a very specific way, make sure that you know which side is up so that when you cut your piece out, you have the side up correctly. What I'm gonna do now is mark my pattern pieces so that I don't forget later in the pattern. So this is pattern piece A. So I'm gonna take some washi tape and just write A on it. And washi tape is great because it's cute and it comes off very easily. It has very poor adhesive, but good enough to last for, you know, a few hours while you're working. You're gonna also need your accent pieces. Here's one that I already cut. I'm gonna show you how I cut this out. If you're using a vinyl or a cork or a leather, you're gonna to wanna to be precise when you're cutting it because this edge right here, this curvy edge, this is gonna stay open just like this. This doesn't get hidden in a seam at any point. So you want this to be a nice smooth cut. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. Okay, so to cut the vinyl, I'm gonna roll my vinyl out. You can see I've got quite a few random cuts. All the template pieces are made on the fold. Now I'm not actually gonna fold my vinyl because I really don't wanna crease in it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna trace it. I'm using a friction pen for this. You can use a pencil, any kind of pen really. And then I'm just gonna trace it. So now I'll take the template piece and line it up against these two markings that I left, just so that it's 
straight. And then I'm gonna continue on. All right. So now I'm just gonna take some scissors and cut it out. Have our other pattern piece. If it's curling up on you a little bit, don't fret. We're going to glue it down in just a minute. The other part that can be a little bit difficult is cutting out the fusible fleece. Now the fusible fleece needs to be smaller than the main panel. The reason for that is because we don't want the fusible fleece to be part of the seams. The pattern piece has a dash line marked for how big the fusible fleece can be. You can just make two of these and then on the second one cut it on that dash line and just mark it as your fusible fleece piece if you want to do it that way. I like to just have one piece that I use for all of it. But before we do that, I just want to tell you that because I've had problems with fusible fleece, I don't always trim this down. On my last bag, I actually kept the fusible fleece the same size as the exterior panel. And this, and I'll show you, and this is what it looks like. So you can see the seams are just a little bit bulkier. We can compare it against the bag where we didn't do that. See the bag where we didn't do that, it lays a little bit flatter because the seams are nice and skinny. They don't have any of that fleece in them. This one does. So it just depends. If you don't mind a bit of a cushier bag, then you know what? Don't even stress about this. Just make the fleece panel the same size as the exterior. If you really want that much sleeker hold, then cut it down. It's totally up to you. So let me show you how we cut this panel using a template that we did not trim down. So I have my fusible fleece laid out flat. You just wanna make sure you have a big enough piece that can cover both sides of the panel. So what you can actually do is poke holes right in these corners for the fusible fleece markings, and this is gonna help you mark these corners. So what you do is you just take your pen and then you mark them in those holes that you made when you were making your template. And then use the edge of the template to make a straight line from each of the dots. And then line up this dashed line over that line you just made with the bottom of the template lined up with the bottom of the line you drew. So you can see the bottom of my template is lined up with this bottom of the line and then the dash line is lined up with the line that I drew. And then from that line, just use the template to trace over to the middle. And I like to kind of go a little bit up so I know this is where my middle is. And you can just do the same for the top. Line up the dashed line with the line you drew. Arrange the top of the template so that it's at the tip of that line. And then just draw from the tip of the line over to the edge and then mark where the fold goes. You should have something like this now. Now what we do is we fold our fleece at these two small lines. Now to help me with cutting, I like to pin the whole panel together. So I just go around putting pins, because I'm gonna be picking it up to cut it, I'm gonna be moving it around a lot and I don't want to have any wonky cuts. Just like that. And I just cut it out. And now you have your fleece piece. All right, so let's fuse our fusible fleece onto our lining panel. We have our lining panel right side down. We're gonna take our fusible fleece piece with the sticky side, which is the grainy side, down. What you wanna do is you wanna center it, but then you actually wanna take the whole thing and flip it over. Because when you fuse the fusible fleece, it sticks better if you fuse it from the fabric side, not on the back of the felt side. So do 
that for both lining pieces. And now we can go stitch this bag together. So step two is adding the accent panels. We're gonna take a large exterior cut and then we're gonna also use our accent panel. And what we wanna do is we just wanna stitch it on the bottom just like that. To help us, we're gonna glue it down. So I'm gonna take some trusty Elmer's glue and I'm just gonna glue all over this. And then just position it where I want it. To help keep it in place, I'm just gonna clip the edges down. All right, so one is ready. And then we're gonna take panel piece B, right side up, and we're gonna glue the other accent on the bottom of this piece. So now we're gonna take these two pieces to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch them down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance with about a three millimeter stitch length all the way around the accent panels from the, over the center and over the sides. And I'll show you how we do that. I'm going to sew this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I like to start on the bottom edge of the bag because the stitches down here are not gonna be seen later. The stitches on the curved side of the accent panel will be seen, so I want that to be one continuous stitch. I don't want a start and a stop over there. So I'm going to put this down, set it to three millimeters, and then just go along. So when we're stitching on the top curve part, the trick to having it look neat and not choppy is to pretty much not stop. So go slow. I'm gonna set my machine pretty slow and I'm just gonna go nice and slow along this edge, turning it as I need to. frustration a lot on the internet when people are sewing with vinyl especially when they're top stitching they say that their uh, stitches are skipping they say that their needle is sticking so uh, my solution to that is if your stitches are skipping you need a new needle I know you know it's like oh, you can't just say that you don't know what the problem is I think you need a new needle I, I will tell you that when I started this just now, my stitches are skipping and I replaced the needle. Needles are tricky because there's different needles for different projects. So it's like if you're using jersey, use this type of needle. If you're using vinyl, use this type of needle. If you're using quilt cotton, use this type of needle. Well, what if I'm using all of them together? <laughs> you know, what if I'm making a bag with jersey and quilt cotton and vinyl? So I like to just use the universal needles. There you go. I like to use these needles for most of my projects. I don't have any problem. You can see my top stitching is nice. Your vinyl shouldn't stick underneath your presser foot if you have a cotton back. The problem with vinyl seems to be if the vinyl side is down against the faceplate, then it's gonna stick because it's, it's a bigger space, right? You have a lot of sticky here sticking to the metal, so it's not gonna move through smoothly. So with this project, we don't have any of that, right? We just have vinyl on top. If you're using a, a foot that is smaller and you're using stitches that are longer, it gives it much less time for the fabric to be pressed against the foot. So smaller surface area, smaller time spent underneath it, it's uh, less likely it's going to stick. I've never had any problem with vinyl sticking to my presser feet. If you have any vinyl questions, if you have any sewing with vinyl questions, ask down below. Anyways, back to sewing. So now we're on step three, which is creating the back pocket. What we want is to combine panel A and panel B to create one larger panel. And along the connection, we're going to have a zipper, which makes an adorable zipper on the back of the bag. So right sides together, A goes down on top of B. And then we're just gonna line up the tops. Okay, so first thing to note is this is gonna be a three quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to mark myself a little right here, right here. 
And then what we want to do is we only want to securely stitch down the ends. We only want to securely stitch, stitch down half an inch on each side. So I'm going to mark half an inch. So I know this is my line. And then I'm going to mark half an inch on this side. So on these markings, I want to sew at a two and a half millimeter stitch length. And I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and at the marks. And then once I go across, I'm going to up my stitch length to four or four and a half millimeters. And I'll continue along until I get to this marking. We want the sides to be secure, but we're going to remove this stitch line right after we insert the zipper. So we want this to be easy to take off. So I'm going to pin this in place. And then I'm going to go to the sewing machine. So I stitched my two and a half millimeter stitches along these end lines and I did a four millimeter stitch along the top using a three quarter of an inch seam allowance. Don't forget that. Three quarters of an inch seam allowance. It's a big seam. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. And we're going to take our iron and we're going to press down this seam allowance to get this whole panel nice and flat. So now we're going to base the zipper. To attach this zipper, I'm going to use some double sided quarter inch tape. So once you have it stuck on, then you go back and remove the top part and you just are ended with two sticky sides. Do the same for the other side. Now I know later I'm going to go back and I'm going to be sewing a half of an inch seam allowance over here. So I want to make sure that my metal stop is not at half of an inch. So I'm actually just going to have it go up just a bit and then just stick it down. I stick about half of it down and then pull it back and open my zipper because that will be easier when I'm sewing. Just press it down as best you can. Make sure it's nice and secure. So now we have our zipper. Before we go to the sewing machine, we're actually going to pin a pocket panel on. So grab one of your pocket panels. So we have our A and B piece right side down. We're going to take our pocket panel right side down and line it up with the top seam right here. So this seam is pressed against the A panel. You're going to line this pocket piece up with that seam. Now I'm going to use some clips and just clip it in place. I also like to add a couple clips to the side so that I don't have my fabric moving around too much when I'm working with it. So we're going to sew on the A side, which is the rounded side, and we're going to sew about a quarter of an inch away from this seam. And this seam is where our zipper is. Now I'm just going to sew about a quarter of an inch from this seam as best I can. Once I get to the zipper pull, I'm actually going to very gently pull it down past this. So whenever you're setting this up originally, you want to make sure your zipper is somewhere in the middle, not on the ends, because if your zipper is on the end, it's going to be very difficult to move it. So here's our bag. We just sewed this on right here, and this is going to be the top part of the pocket. Now we're going to add the second panel. So the second panel is going to be added the exact same way, just on the other seam. So we can open up our panel, flip our bag around. So now we have the wrong side of B on top and the right side of the previous pocket panel on the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to line up our second pocket piece right side down and we're going to line it with this seam, the seam that's pressed against B. So now just clip this on to this seam's edge. Clip your pocket piece on to the B seam's edge. And we're going to do the same thing sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So what I just did was press down this pocket piece against panel B. And then I trimmed off the excess of the pocket pieces so that it's all flush. So now I want to stitch the pocket piece onto the exterior piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start just above the zipper and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to go all the way down over the vinyl, 
all the way along the bottom, back up to the zipper and just past the zipper. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance the entire time and in that is going to be the exterior, the vinyl and both pocket pieces. I want all of them together. You can see I sewed my quarter inch seam along here and my pocket panel is now attached. So let's move on to step four, attaching the magnetic snaps. The magnetic snaps will be attached to the exterior panel that's just one large piece. Use your pattern piece or template to help you mark um, where you attach the snaps. You can see this one, it's on the pattern piece, so I'm just gonna draw a little dot. She also gives you the measurements, how far down and how far up they'll be. But I'm just gonna mark these dots just like that. So what I do is I like to actually center it over my dot and then I mark where the two little feet are. And then using my seam ripper, I cut just very, very small slits, maybe a quarter of an inch long slits. And then I'll take the foot, and I'll take the male end, and I'll slide its prongs into those slits and work my way over. So now I have these sticking up, and then I take one of the backing pieces put it through there and open it up just like that. See, easy peasy. Snaps are easy, guys. I'm gonna do the same thing for the female end. Mark where I want my feet to go. I just centered over the dot that I originally drew. Push it through and then I'll use my backing piece. You can see a lot of times they cut these backing pieces out of like soda cans and recycled materials, so that's kind of cool. Push it down and open it up. Now, I'm going to take a couple scrap pieces of woven interfacing and I'm gonna cover these up with that. So these are just a couple scraps from when I was cutting my woven interfacing. I'll just lay them over the magnetic pieces and press down as best I can. And if you're using the woven fuse from Barb's Bags, I'm telling you, it, it just adheres so quickly and it stays, I love it. So step five is adding a wristlet strap. Since we're doing the large clutch, I'm actually not going to do that this time, but I do have a video linked below and up above on how to make the wristlet strap and how to make a two-toned wristlet strap and how to add it to any bag, including this one. And you can see if you actually did two D-rings and swivels, you can make a super cute small crossbody bag. So those are linked below. On to step six, which is attaching the main zipper. You're gonna to wanna to mark three quarters of an inch away from each end along the curve. And then what I like to do is I like to fold my fabric on the top in half, pinch it, and mark the center. And then I'll do the same for my zipper. Fold my zipper in half, pinch it, and mark the center. So then I take my center of my zipper with the center of my external piece and I line them up just like that and then I will clip it and then I'll just go all the way around until I get to that three quarter of an inch mark. Once you get to your three quarter of an inch mark, fold the zipper tape up just like that. You want it pointed straight up so that the zipper goes off the edge. And now do the same for the other side. Okay, so I have my zipper completely prepped. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna use a zipper foot and a quarter of inch seam allowance to sew this along the edge. All right, so quarter inch seam allowance. We wanna sew the angled part down so that it stays. So just hold it in place while you do that. have our zipper attached now we need to add our lining piece so we're gonna take our exterior piece with the zipper up top right side up and we're gonna take a lining piece that has the fusible fleece on it right side down and we're just gonna pin them together So 
now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm actually just gonna sew on this side right on top of that previous stitch line. You wanna make sure you start and stop a half an inch away from these edges. So I'm going to mark that just so I remember half an inch away. And this is because you're gonna be opening up this seam later to finish the bag. Right there. So I'm just gonna sew along this edge from this mark to this mark, just going right over the previous stitches. So I'm gonna trim these zipper tabs off. Now the pattern does not have you top stitch right now. The pattern has you wait until the end to top stitch. I prefer to top stitch now. So I'm going to push this out, wrong sides together, and I'm going to press along this zipper. Now the trick to top stitching is you need to make sure you only top stitch by the zipper, okay? So you don't top stitch over here. You top stitch from the zipper start to the zipper end. If you do that, you shouldn't have any problems later. So I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna press this and then go to my machine and use an eighth of an inch top stitch. <laughs> So you can see that I top stitched and I left the half of an inch on each side open because I'm going to use that later for finishing the bag. So now let's add the opposite side. So we have the two exterior panels and we're going to align that we're going to lay down the A and B panel on top of the main panel and you can remove your sticker now. And I'm just going to line it up amongst the sides just like that. I'm gonna pin it a little bit, and then I'm gonna go flip up my corners. So flip over your bag. Now, you wanna take this corner and flip it straight up, and pin it. Take the other corner, I wanna open your zipper a bit, and just follow it along the edge, and then flip this up, that corner and now we're just going to go to the sewing machine using a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to sew along this edge close to the zipper so here we go we have the zipper attached to the other exterior panel so now what we need to do is attach the other lining take your main piece with the panel you just attached on the bottom and the previously attached lining panel right side up. Take your other lining panel and lay it right side down. We're just gonna square it up with the rest of the bag and then we'll just pin it to the top. Once again, we wanna make sure we start and stop our stitches a half of an inch away from the edge. So let's mark that. And a half an inch here. All right, so I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew along those previous stitches, starting at this point, going all the way around, and ending at this point. And I have my all my pieces together. I have my A and B exterior piece, I have my main exterior piece, and I have both linings. So I have it all sewn together now. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip my tails. And then I'm gonna flip it right sides out. I'm gonna flip it lining side out. And I am going to top stitch this, just like I previously did. And it can make it easier if you just open up the whole thing. There we go. So we open up the whole thing, line it up, and pull our zipper out. So just like I did on the other side, I'm going to press this down with my iron. I'm just gonna go over the whole area with my iron. And then I'm going to go a half an inch from the edges, top stitch right along the zipper. All right, so now I have both sides top stitched and we can move on to the next step. So step seven is just final assembly. What we're gonna do is open your zipper all the way up, fold out your exterior pieces, right sides together, and lay your lining pieces right sides together. Now mark 
a five inch opening on the side of one of your lining pieces. So I'm just going to use my cutting mat for that. Over here, so there's my opening. And this is what we're gonna use in the very end to pull the whole bag right side out. Just use your clips and clip the whole thing together. When aligning the exterior pieces, I like to make sure that my vinyls are point to point. So, because that will probably be the most noticeable if you're a little off where the vinyls meet will be noticeable if they're not together. So, and then I'll just work the bag to line up correctly everywhere else. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. We're gonna start at one end of our opening and go all the way around and finish at the other end. When you're sewing the lining side, you want a three quarters of an inch seam allowance. When you're sewing the exterior side, you want a half of an inch seam allowance. So you're just gonna have to slowly transition your needle as you go around those. It's not that complicated, I promise. So my washi tape that I'm using here is lined up so that the edge closest to the needle is at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And my washi tape is actually half of an inch wide. So I know that three quarter of an inch seam allowance is gonna be this edge of the tape and a half of an inch seam allowance is right in the middle. Backstitch. Okay, there we go. All right, so here's our bag all wrong side out. Well, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go along in the entire bag except for our opening and trim it down to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now you can just eyeball this. So now we're gonna turn the bag right side out. Now, if you're following the instructions for step seven, it suggests that you top stitch this opening closed and then top stitch around the zipper. I do not suggest doing that because if you top stitch this opening closed, it's gonna be very difficult for you to turn the exterior of the bag with that vinyl on the bottom. So if you are going to wait until the end to top stitch, turn the bag completely out like this top stitch the zipper and then push out the corners of the vinyl and then top stitch the opening closed. Because pushing out these corners of the vinyl tends to be a little tricky. All right, give it a good little press. Vinyl's tricky. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, vinyl's tricky. All right, so I'm gonna go close up this edge. All I do is put my fingers in, tug in those big tabs we left, give it a little tug like that clip it and it, it, it wants to stay closed like this. It doesn't take much effort to close the seam. And then I'm gonna go from this end to this end using a eighth of an inch seam allowance and just top stitch this closed. So it's top stitch closed. You can give this a press if you want to since it's gonna be on the inside of the bag. I actually don't 
I don't really mind it. Just shove the lining inside. So just use your hands to kind of smooth out any wrinkles you have in here. And zip it up. Fold it down. And there you go. Adorable. So we did it. We made a Heidi bag. Here it is. Ah, oh, look at that fabric. Look how it pops. And I love the little placement. And then here's the back with the nice little secret pocket. Boom, right? And then when you open it up, so this is a great, great size bag. Now I have added D-rings and a strap onto this size bag to make a crossbody bag as a gift for someone. If you would like to see a tutorial on how to do that with the larger size, how to add the D-rings on and then the strap to make it adjustable, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll um, pop up a video for that. This is just, cause look at it, crossbody, wouldn't that be great? Look at that, so long. It's a perfect size and it's just, it's a perfect weight. I'm a huge fan of this bag. So thanks so much for stopping by. I hope that this inspired you to go and, you know, make a Heidi bag. I think this is a great bag for beginners. And, you know, we always say enthusiastic beginners. And like, what does that mean? It means, it, well, it means you're excited about making bags. You're so excited about making bags that you're gonna be okay with how aggravating some of the steps are. This is a bag I have made over and over again, and I still make mistakes sometimes. It's just, there are some complicated pieces in there. So it's good if you've already practiced making a couple simple bags, like my reusable snack pouch and sandwich pouch, um, that use a simple zipper. So that you kind of have the idea of how the pieces, how the lining, how the exterior have to go to have a lined bag. And then this just takes you to the next level where you're adding vinyl accents and you're adding hidden pockets, a new type of zipper. So this is a really great bag for someone who's just starting out, but feels very confident in their skills. This is also a great bag for anybody who's been sewing for a long time because it's hecka useful. And if you think you're gonna make a bunch of these, I highly suggest making those plastic templates because they are a lifesaver. So thanks again. Make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe so you know everything that's coming up. We got a new video every single Monday, a new tutorial. And I'm gonna actually add in another video this month because hello, it's August. Ah, what happened? How did that happen? But it's August. I'm gonna add a video in August which is gonna be like a craft fun purchase haul. It won't be on a Monday tutorial, don't worry. It's not gonna replace that. It's gonna be on another day of the week. And it's just gonna kind of go through all the fun sewing related things I got and maybe like personal things I got that were just kind of fun buys. I don't know, are you guys like haul videos? I am a notorious shopper, so I love watching what other people buy and I love buying stuff myself. If you're interested, make sure you leave a comment down below and you let me know. So I'll see you guys next time. Get out there and make something, bye.